Game of Thrones saw several people try to win the throne after the previous king died, and many years of bloody war followed before a surprising candidate won. Quite a lot of the show has some root in real history, and that overarching story is just one of them. One war in particular has a resemblance to the War of the Five Kings from the show and books. That war was the War of the Spanish Succession, and when it was over, there were long-term consequences for Spain, Britain and France that we still live with today. The war was between France and Spain on one side, and Britain, the Netherlands and the Holy Roman Empire under Austria on the other. But why was there a need for war, and what consequences did it have for all involved? The Spanish royal family was a little bit unlucky when it came to succession. Over the centuries they had royal lines die out, and by the early 1500s the Austrian royal family, the Habsburgs, were in control. That meant two of the most powerful nations in Europe were under one family. During this period, Spain was colonising like hell, and had a huge head start on the other European nations, making it extremely rich and powerful. But by the mid-1600s, Spain was in decline. Other European nations started to muscle in on their colonial spree and the cost of administering a huge empire started to take its toll. This leads us to the last in that line of kings of Spain, Carlos II, or Charles II. He was given a hospital pass by his lavish ancestors and politicians, but Spain's decline was largely blamed on him. He was probably infertile, not surprising given the inbreeding of the Habsburgs, and in an era where not having a clear succession meant the vultures would swarm, he was under pressure to name an heir. Not just internally, but others in Europe had their eye on the throne. The major players were France under Louis XIV and Austria under Archduke Leopold. The family line was already Austrian, so the Austrians naturally thought that should continue. Louis XIV did not love that idea and instead wanted to put one of his grandsons on the throne. Sitting on the sidelines were England and the Netherlands. Neither had any serious plans to get the throne themselves, but both opposed the idea of France getting more powerful by running France and Spain as one mega empire. Internally in Spain, there was also a need to take a decisive stance. So Carlos stepped up and picked a third party, Joseph Ferdinand Leopold of Bavaria, or Joseph Ferdinand from now on. A Habsburg relation, but without the control of a major European nation, like France or Austria did, so less of a threat. All was good and no one had to go to war over it. Except they did. Why? Well, Joseph Ferdinand died before Carlos, meaning the whole rigmarole started all over again. So who did Carlos pick this time as the clock ticked before he died? Philippe of France, Louis XIV's grandson. He put in his will and demanded that no one break up the Spanish Empire. And then he died. Even this decision wasn't enough to guarantee war. In the year or so after Carlos died, Philippe of France became Felipe de Espana. So far, so good. Most of the major European powers had been through a series of wars with Louis XIV, meaning no one was exactly eager for more war, including him. It's hard to come up with a single reason for why a war happened, but Louis XIV didn't quite make the right noises about keeping France and Spain separate, while also testing the readiness of Dutch defences just in case. Meanwhile, Austria still hoped they could get another Habsburg on the throne, but on the other hand, England and the Netherlands had the same ruler, William III, and so it should have been easy to get both of them to go to war, but he was treated as a foreigner in England, classic English hospitality, and so he couldn't drum up much support for the war there. But once he died, Queen Anne, of the favourite fame, ascended to the English throne and most opposition to the war faded away in England. The English barely gave a damn about these wars in Europe at this time, unless it f***ed with their money. The final straw for England was after Louis used Felipe to ban English and Dutch merchants trading with Spanish colonies, a significant part of their economies. So they were in. Louis miscalculated on that. That meant an alliance between England, Austria, Prussia, Savoy and the Netherlands to take on France and Spain. The war of the Spanish succession was on. It was a long slog, with the Allies looking to knock Louis XIV back a peg or two, as well as ideally remove Felipe from the Spanish throne and replace him with an Austrian. France did better in the first few years. They even had a secret weapon. Bavaria, of Joseph Ferdinand fame, kept Austria busy in the first few years, and along with France managed to keep them pinned back. After a very rough start, where he did his best to avoid bankruptcy and struggling to make decisions independently without his granddad, Felipe was proving to be surprisingly popular in Spain, with him eventually keeping enough distance between his own way and his granddad Louis XIV. But by 1706, Bavaria had been dealt with, and the alliance fought back. In 1707, England formed a union with Scotland and became Great Britain. Whether as England or Britain, they were the bankrollers of the Allies and were the only force who were capable of significant land and sea warfare in the war. To try to counter them, Louis looked to try and provide a distraction. He supported an invasion of Scotland to try to get the son of the deposed King of England and Scotland, James, onto the throne. But bad weather, classic, 
and British naval supremacy meant the invasion was doomed to be nothing more than a distraction for the Brits. James's great grandson would be back in 50 or so years for the Jacobite Rebellion. Britain also had one of the main military commanders of the war, John Churchill, or Marlborough, the husband of the favourite and the favourite. Also some guy called Winston Churchill's ancestor. For the next three years, the Allies had the advantage, including capturing Madrid and Gibraltar. Yeah, this is why Gibraltar is British to this day. The Allies' success also persuaded Portugal to get on side, which helped them in Spain. But by 1709, the war was at a relative stalemate, with Felipe taking back most of Spain. In that year, there was a battle that shocked Europe, the Battle of Malplaquet. The French were suffering badly at this point in the war. They had no money and barely enough food to feed the people. They were actively avoiding battles. This one became inevitable, because if they didn't fight, the Allies might have the chance to attack Paris and end the war. The Allies had superior numbers and tried to overwhelm the French, but the French General Villars had a plan and managed to keep his force together and cause large casualties amongst the Allies. The French withdrew from the battle, which makes it a technical loss, but really the victory was very costly to the Allies, and the casualties were up there with any other that century. The sheer scale of the bloodshed is what shocked everyone. Even still, France was struggling due to a huge famine in Europe, particularly in France and Spain, that made Louis XIV desperate for peace. France may have been the strongest and richest single nation in the war, but the people had seen near constant war for seven years by this stage. A large ring of French fortifications meant that although the Allies won major battles, such as Blenheim and Malplaquet, they couldn't make a major assault on Paris at any stage of the war. Louis offered separate pieces to the Dutch and the British, knowing that they also couldn't see the point in keeping going with most aims achieved. But the Allies tried to negotiate together and truly punish France. The Allies demanded Louis get rid of his own grandson as a condition of peace. He wasn't against the removal of Felipe, but he wouldn't go as far as to do it himself. He countered by offering to pay them to do it for him, which they refused. The rest of the war was all about both sides fighting to make a better peace for themselves. Louis to keep Felipe on the Spanish throne, and the Allies doing their best to stop that continuing. This despite the fact that both sides were exhausted by such a long war. But on they went. The French army was no longer capable of large attacks, and looked to mostly hold what they had. The Allies still wanted to capture Paris to enforce their ideal peace. By 1712, Britain was under a Tory government, classic, and willing to negotiate separately. They took Gibraltar and Menorca as prizes. This was considered a victory by Britain, despite the huge cost for them. But wait, three of the heirs of Louis XIV, ahead of Felipe in the succession, died during the latter stages of the war, meaning Felipe was close to inheriting the French kingdom to go with his Spanish empire after all. The only claimant ahead of him was severely ill with smallpox. After the Battle of Denain, the French under Villars went on a lightning campaign to recapture many of the forts they'd previously lost in the war, with the Allies no longer having the drive to hold on to what they had without British money. The dream of taking Paris was over. The Netherlands, Portugal and Savoy exited the war in 1713, but Austria was stubborn and hung in there for another year. They made one last push to get one of their own back on the Spanish throne, but alas, instead they gained more territory in the Netherlands and Italy for their efforts. So the war was over. Most of the participants had been through major pain with huge expenses and casualties by the standards of the day. Within a year, Louis XIV was dead, but Felipe remained the Spanish king. So France technically won the Game of Thrones and the War of the Spanish Succession. And luckily for the Allies, they had already wrung a concession from Felipe to renounce all claims on the French throne for himself and his descendants. The other guy with smallpox, he survived and became Louis XV of France. The Spanish and French thrones were separate after all. The huge cost of the war meant the French royal family largely limped on until the French Revolution, where Louis XVI was executed and a republic declared. But even that wasn't the end of the French Bourbons. If you've ever seen Les Mis, that mini-revolution was not THE French Revolution, but it did lead to the end of the Bourbon royal family in France. But not quite the end of kings in France. I'll do a video on that soon though. Britain became more and more powerful in the hundred or so years after this and the war weakened many of their rivals, such as the Dutch and the French. But the Spanish Bourbons have largely been in charge ever since the war. An obscure French general and emperor called Napoleon did replace them with his own brother, but that didn't stick, and they came back. Again, under Franco's fascist regime, they were deposed, but they returned after he died. Now the family is coasting by without any scandals that forced a king to abdicate. Nothing to see there at all.